Hey everyone, this is Steve Wancho with Collider, and I am here in the Collider Sundance Studio, sponsored by Saratoga Spring Water. I want to give a huge thank you to them because uh, Sundance attending Sundance is expensive, and we appreciate our sponsors. So I will say thank you to Saratoga. Um, I am thrilled to be with the cast and filmmakers behind, and I want to make sure I get this right, Aliens Abducted My Parents and Now I Feel Left Out. Kind of left out. See, I already knew I was going to mess that up. Um, <laughs> It's a big title. Yeah. Yeah. Um, was So someone who runs a website, say me, it's hard when a movie is that long of a title because it takes up a lot of space. Did you get any like feedback saying, hey, do you, you, you feel this strongly about the long title? For sure. I think uh, the thing about it, though, is that when Austin pitched the movie to me, Austin wrote the movie, and when he pitched it to me, that's all he said was the title. And I don't know. I mean, that's the log line. Like, you know everything about the movie from that. So we were like, well, we can't change it. It's also... I mean, it sticks in your brain. So people have been like, I don't know, maybe we workshop it a little bit, but Austin and I have kind of always been like, no, that's it. That's the title. We don't care about the Steves of the world. Right. Or the websites. <laughs> oh, or the, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use a more term, the SEO of the world. Yeah, right. Because, I think, yes, that was a little bit of a misstep. So maybe we do care about that. No, I mean, you know something, though? It is, I agree with you, though. When you hear the title, you know what the movie is. Like, you, you know what I mean? So everyone watching this, congrats for being part of Sundance, but everyone watching will not have seen the movie yet. So I guess Austin or Jake, who wants to bite the bullet and say the, how have you been describing the film to friends and family? Austin does. I start with the title. I say, well, it's about a boy who believes his, uh, he saw his parents get abducted by aliens and he's not even mad about it. He just is kind of bummed that they didn't take him with him. Uh, and then in walks Itzy, this girl from the big city uh, who meets this boy and they have they share this similar want, which is to get out of this small town and go and do something else. Uh, and, that, and that's oh. and that's Austin. Uh, basically everything is a spoiler yeah. to a degree. I mean, that's true. everything Just apart, the everything apart from the title <laughs> still is a spoiler. Right. So. Uh, so I guess the big question is, um, I, I'm a big fan of Will's work. And Same. I'll, yeah. why wouldn't you be? So uh, right. how often on set did you quote MacGruber or talk about MacGruber or any of Will's past work? Uh, here's the beautiful thing. We made this movie in such a quick amount of time that Will came in and out in a blink of an eye. And we had like 80 pages to shoot while he was there. <laughs> so there was like so little time to quote MacGruber. But what I will say is that there while we- There also were a lot of kids. On there there were, it, I mean, it's a kid's movie. Sure, yeah. But we did, we went to his trailer once and he showed us some scenes from the MacGruber TV show that hadn't come out yet. And that was the highlight of the movie for me. Right. Mm -hmm. that, I heard you guys laughing. <laughs> One of the things about this film though is it's appropriate for all ages. Uh, anyone can watch it. And so for the actors, can you sort of talk about, is that one of the things that drew you to the project? Uh, yeah, I think I think for me, I loved that family friendly aspect, but I feel like a lot of those films kind of push aside emotions, which I feel like a lot of kids do feel. But this one kind of dives into that and dives into the loneliness and and really shows kids that they have more to offer than just the people around them and whether they're there or not. Yeah, for me, it was the like comedy of it. I've never done anything so comedic as this movie. And I learned my flaws that I can't keep a still face in a scene so i ruined so many takes by laughing because everyone here is just hilarious mm -hmm. and for you guys what was it about the script or story that said i want to do this i i got to know uh jake over well like 10 years ago he was a pa on the movie don verdeen and there was a day that i think the schedule changed around and so we ended up just walking around the streets of tiniest little yeah. tiny town in Utah. Yeah. And then, and then years later, we, uh, they invited me to do their show. He and McLean called show offs and, and I became friends with them. And then I came and did studio C both of them for BYU TV. And so at that point when we were doing studio C, he said, uh, you know, do you want to be a part of this movie? And I basically, I didn't know anything about the script at that point. I think I just said, yes. And then yeah, he did. The, <laughs> just cause these guys are great. And it was, the experience of working with them and it's, and I've done a lot of very dirty stuff <laughs> in my life. And I just had kids and it's like, he's, they're very amazing at creating this very, it's a type of absurd, a clean absurdity that's so fun and interesting 
and that it just it's I have a lot of respect for it because I I don't know it's hard for like I you know you take away the the dirtiness from stuff and sometimes you know I don't know I don't I don't have much so so with the <laughs> the, the fact that he can do such funny stuff in a clean way is very uh, exhilarating and and I was just excited to be a part of it and I have two little little daughters now so it's fun to be in something yeah. they can watch clean absurdity do you love that I, that's your new I, thing you I can could, describe yourself i can listen way. to you guys talk about this movie all day <laughs> great question um my friend bob called and said do you want to work with some of the greatest guys in this business and i said sure <laughs> that was it and then i read the script and it was it was so quirky and charming and true and lovely and um I felt like it was a gift. That's fine. I'm curious though, you have a, a big scene. Like I would imagine you were, this is one of these things where you are in and out of this project. Okay. And so, and you have a big scene in a diner. And I'm curious, what is it like when you're stepping foot on set where everyone's been shooting already yeah. and you need to make, you need to do it all, like everything about your character in a short amount of time? Oh, I loved it. I mean, it was the most welcoming set. You guys were spectacular. I came to set, I got hugs. I got, oh my gosh, we're so happy you're here. I heard we're so happy you're here probably like 15 times with hugs, with what can I get you? Would you like to sit here? And I was like, this is nice. <laughs> like I have a teenager at home. I'm not treated like this. <laughs> so I felt like it was great. And I loved, and the character was so beautifully drawn. It felt, um, I don't know, it felt like a joy. One of the things I also liked is that Itzy's parents are very supportive. It is not a, um, you know what I mean? Like it's unusual. So can you sort of talk about that aspect? Um, if you want to talk about it. Yeah, um, it was really fun to work with like the parents themselves and then to also like build that relationship with them really fast too. Cause they were also kind of like in it and out of it pretty quickly. So it was really fun to get to know them and then get to know Itzy and how she has so much like range of what she can do and like she gets grounded and then she's like leaving because she's never been grounded you know like she she has her life to herself and they're just kind of watching her and so that made a movie <laughs> i think also we we wanted to make the parents feel kind of like 80s parents we didn't want the parents to be we, the story is about these two teenagers and so we wanted to have the parents be like there as much as they needed to be parental figures but also the idea was that it's the movies about the kids and so we we're kind of letting them just come in and out and and be supportive but also be a little bit aloof like we saw in those like 80s movies you know? oh no 100 percent. and um, the parents just love each other so much they're so obsessed with each other a lot of the times that they kind of are on their own having their own little adventure and we liked having parents that are you know like they love each other and they're kind of in their own little world and that was fun for us rather than having like parents that are just fighting or having conflict all the time it, it felt natural to have these parents be so excited about moving to this you know small town and doing you know the fixer upper dream so they, that kind of just worked on its own i'm curious about the space suit um and when you first saw it wearing it and also the lab yeah so that space suit is pretty dang cool it's it's got tons and tons of layers of like a bucket that was sawed out so i could put my arms through that comes over and has little buttons on it and then it was like a biker helmet that was painted and um and that was pretty fun also the goo that you have to <laughs> that was fun and i got so much <laughs> it was it was landry that i got that all over okay that that was a very fun scene and that suit was definitely Physical comedy, I think, is the best way to put it. Yeah. Is it one of those things where you tried to borrow it from set and people said, F that? You know, I wish I could. Because I imagine if you could go snowboarding in that. Just slap that on, put on your helmet. Well, I, I think, to be honest, it was a snowboarding suit that was converted into, <laughs> really, it was. Yeah. It was a one-piece snowboarding suit. Yeah, it was, was a white snowboarding that, yeah. suit that got <clears throat> dirtied up. Um, uh, I'm just thinking about that. I'm like, but that, that, that's called um, having a budget. And you need to, you know, do whatever you can to. But that actually is my, my next thing. So obviously this is not a Marvel movie. You have a finite schedule and a finite budget. What ended up being the toughest stuff to pull off with the, you know, what you were up against? Well, I think in general, the, this, I mean, we were really shooting a lot of pages every day. We shot the film and not a huge amount of time we're talking 14 days or 25 15 got it 15 See? days exactly yes uh exactly and and so truthfully like when will and elizabeth were there we 
had to pack in every single scene that they were in in those two days. And so that was probably the toughest thing. I will say, though, that the crew that we have, we shot this locally in Utah, and the crew we have are so inventive, and they have done such. <laughs> that's me, and that's, I'm very sorry. So it's allowed. <laughs> right. OK. Um, no, they're just so good at being inventive, and they beg, borrowed, and stole things from other sets and from other things that they had done. And so that was able, we were able to put a lot of stuff on the screen that way. Uh, uh, another, this is another director question, and I'm uh, apologize. Well, I'll take it from here, guys. Right, uh, <laughs> but I am curious. Because listen, I'm obsessed with the editing process because that's where the film comes together. So, how did the film change in the editing room in ways you didn't expect, or what did you did you show the movie to people and they said, "Oh, you need to fix this"? Yes, there were. I mean, there was nothing egregious that people were like, "Uh oh, this doesn't work." I the first cut I got back though was like 74 minutes, and I was like oh no, what have I done? And it just took a little bit of like finessing and pacing. It was just a little bit tight. And so we just opened it up a little bit. And I think that was the biggest thing is making sure that the pacing was right. Because there are such like heartfelt moments in the movie and there are also like comedic moments. And so that was the biggest thing is finding the balance and the, in, the transitions in and out of those scenes to make sure we weren't like, whoa, this is all over the place. It flows a little bit more. Uh, you guys are obviously part of the Sundance Film Festival. Oftentimes you find out uh, at the last minute or you find out way in advance enough to keep the secret. So for all of you, did you when did you find out and how long did you were you not able to tell anyone? I mean, I'll just be, because I got the call first, I'll just start and then I'll be quiet for the I rest of the great. interview. But um, I was on another movie in Ireland in December and got a phone call at like three in the morning and didn't get it till I woke up. And I texted the number because it didn't recognize it and was like, hey, sorry, I missed your call. Um, I'm awake now or something. And then it was Kim, the senior programmer for Sundance, and she called me right away and was like, hey, it was midnight for her at that point. And she was like, I just was so excited. I wanted to tell you. And I was all alone in this room in Ireland and was just shouting and screaming. I was like, "My this movie, Alien movie? And she's like, yeah, we loved it. And so then I got to call the other producers on the film and wake them up. And Austin was and sit, I kept calling and texting, and he's he like, called I'm me because it was midnight. It was midnight, <laughs> and so I'm in bed, and my phone starts buzzing, and I look, and it's Jake, and so I silenced it and put it back down because I wasn't gonna answer it. So he calls wow, me again, right? yeah. and again, I silenced it, and then I hear a text, and he, I read it, and he goes, "Are you awake?" And so I text, and I was like, "No," <laughs> and I put it back down. And then he calls when he called me the third time. I picked it up, and I literally sat up, and I was like. I think we just got into Sundance. And so I answered the phone and I was like, do you know that it's midnight? He goes, I know buddy, but the Sundance Institute just called, we got in. And then we just started laughing. We just started It was giggling. a lot of laughing. Yeah. Yeah. It was like noon for me, but I was still sleeping. <laughs> so I yeah, also yeah, that's got true. Up. We texted her and we're like, "Hey, can we talk?" And she's like, well, "Yes." And she's like, "We Facetime her," and she's like, "Oh, they didn't know like, this was happening." My hair is messy. I'm still in bed, and they tell me, and I'm like, "You're kidding me!" And then I like hang up and I run and I tell my parents, and I didn't keep it a secret. I told everyone I knew. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you're supposed to do that, but next time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I pretty much found out like around noon as well just got a text being like hey could we hop on a zoom got on and and found out that way just a random day being told i was uh, about 11:55 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> probably the first sounds like the first he was yeah it does sound like you were the first uh, call no i i remember being i was just so excited i don't know about like you just this was you don't i didn't, I didn't sign up for this thing going oh this is an obvious sundance <laughs> movie you know it was just so great because it, it like she said everyone who's a part of this was just so welcoming inviting good at what they did and and it was just i was just so happy to be a part of it and 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 just to to know that this came out of it was so i was just so thrilled for everybody I found out after everyone else, and, and uh, way after, I don't know if that's true, but I'm going to say it since you were first. I get to be last. It's something. And, um, and I was on a set, and I got a call. I got a text saying, pick up your phone. <laughs> Same thing, right? Yeah. Um, we have, and then um, McLean called and said, we got into Sundance. And I was like, wait, wait, what? What <laughs> yeah, movie? No, really. <laughs> Sundance. And I was, like, I was like, for our little sweet movie? And they're like, yeah. And I was like, oh. And then it was, a, it was late, and it was a quiet night. And I started dancing around in the street, and they and the little security guys like, you can't do that. 
No. Okay, I, but I was, it was, there was joy. There was real joy. Um, first of all, thank you all for sharing. Those are some great stories. I love it when it's stories like this. Um, we're almost out of time. I have to ask maybe an individual question or two. Uh, Will, I have an individual question. Um, I'm so curious about Coyote versus Acme, which is not something that is obviously this movie because it's CG live action. You're doing something with John Cena. So what can you tell people about it? Because um, it sounds like it could be cool. Oh, it's, I mean, it was so fun to make this. It's a, it's a, a movie about, uh, it came out of this article that I think is decades old that was, uh, uh, Wiley Coyote is, is suing the Acme Corporation, uh, because of all the, you know, different things that, you know, uh, contraptions that have exploded in his face and stuff like that. And so I get to play Wiley Coyote's lawyer. <laughs> and it's a mixture of of animation and it's kind of like a who framed roger rabbit style movie and yeah john cena is so great in it uh i mean it's just uh, lana condor is in it it's it was so much fun making it and these guys who are making it are so smart they just had because you gotta figure out where this animated character is gonna move to i was just it was amazing to be a part of it so i'm excited to to see how it turns out because of course you know when i'm i'm acting with a tennis ball a lot of times there's a tennis ball for an eye line and it's moving around so yeah i think uh i don't know how much more i can say about it but that's no no i've, I mean, I've kind of blathered on I, it for a while I, it's interesting because roger rabbit is such an amazing movie and you like recently obviously chippendale came out uh and which is fantastic if you haven't seen it on disney plus uh and look but that's you know what i mean like i'm uh, i'm glad that this genre is being further explored rather than um, being pushed to the way. Cause it's anyway, Roger oh, Rabbit yeah. did such an amazing job. No, I mean, there are so many different characters from that universe that are involved. It was a real honor to get to like act with all these beloved cartoon characters. Elizabeth, I have to ask you, uh, um, when you signed on to play Mrs. Claus, did you ever think this is really going to be something I play for a while? 20 years. Right. Yeah. 20 years. <laughs> um, I didn't. No, not at all. I was so excited to do it. It was one of my first big movies. And I thought, I thought, well, yeah, yay. I didn't think about it for a second. So 20 years later, it's wonderful. Yeah. So fun. Uh, yeah. If we had more time, I would also um, spend a lot more time talking about The Expanse. Oh. I'm just going to say how much I love that show. Yeah. And I'm going to move on. Uh, <laughs> so I believe, and I could be wrong, that you recently worked with uh, someone named Meryl? Or am I... Did I, am I getting this wrong? Like Meryl Streep when I was nine. Is, was, <gasps> so, yeah. but, That's amazing. Wait, well, that how, wasn't too are recent. Are you not 11? How old are you? Uh, <laughs> just a little bit older than that. Yeah. No, but I, I am curious what it's like when you, I said it wrong when I did it, but like, what is it like when you work with someone like that? And when you're at that age, do you realize who you're working with? Not at all. And it's so weird because like when I was a kid, I did like these huge movies back to back and I was like clueless like the only person I knew was Robert Downey Jr. because it's Iron Man but it's like only now that I can like be like oh my god I worked with Robert Downey Jr. and Meryl Streep and I didn't even know and they were just in the corner and I was like doing whatever so it's weird it's really weird but it's an interesting story and oh, it's so, so awesome. weird yeah. to look back and just be like I had no clue what I was doing but yeah, it's no, but, cool. it, but you know what I mean, though, because like now, like like you're saying, when you're looking back, it, it has to be. It, yeah, it just has to be a very weird kind yeah. of a thing, yeah. you know? No, it's so weird. And like Jeff Bridges was a part of that movie, too. Yeah. And like, I didn't know who that was when I was like nine and I should have, but I didn't. No, and, but you shouldn't. Yeah, yeah exactly. like when, no, you're, you're, you when I was yeah. when I was nine, I was playing with toys. The fact yeah. that you were doing anything, mm -hmm. yeah. you know what I mean? So uh, it was weird. And it's really fun to look back. And sometimes I'll just like watch the movies just to be like that actually happened that's so weird <laughs> like it do it doesn't work it doesn't make sense uh someone was also on a show called let the right one in which i believe the whole first season is wrapped or is it is the last episode coming Am yeah I no it's completely out first yeah. season is completely out so w talk a little bit about the experience of making that because um it also like is there any word on doing another season like what yeah, so not quite sure about a new season, but that was a big experience because right after finishing this film, I turned 18, moved to New York alone, and did my first prosthetics role where I was a vampire and kind of like, yeah, a lot of kind of crazy stuff. Um, very different from this film, I will say. And 
and <laughs> yes, yes, but it, it really was such a blast. And I actually worked with Grace Gummer, Meryl Streep's daughter, as my sister. And um, yeah, so that, that was really such a blast, just being able to work with so many phenomenal people across the US. Um, listen, I could ask you, I had other questions, but I have to wrap. And I'm just gonna say sincerely, congrats. Thank so you. happy for you Thank guys you. and you. have a fantastic Sundance.